Hello. We're back once again with another episode of Golf Cart Garage. I am Tim. I work for Golf Cart Garage, in case you didn't know that. And I am a member of the Gearheads On Demand service that we offer. That is a service that we offer here at Golf Cart Garage where you can schedule an appointment with me and I'll call you and talk to you about your golf cart issue. If you're interested in that, click the link in the description. That'll take you to the scheduling page. Uh, is, we are live right now. Uh, we go live twice a week, Tuesdays and Thursdays. We go live on Facebook and YouTube every Tuesday and Thursday at 12 noon Central Time. Uh, let's see, if you, if you don't want to follow us on Facebook and YouTube, which you should, you can follow us on any platform. I'm running the links to all the other social media platforms that you can follow us on. Craig, what's up, man? Uh, Craig and YouTube. Uh, let's see. This is episode 115, April the 27th. Like I said, we are live. We will answer some, uh, I've got some regular questions here that we get at Golf Cart Garage that we collect all week long. And I'll go over some of those and I'm sure that we will be interacting with people in the live chat also. Let me check over here. Looks like we're good there. Yeah, we got some, we got some of our regular people coming in. Ricky Smith, what's up Ricky? Uh, Tim and Craig, and all the gearheads. I appreciate y'all stopping by. Let's see here. Let's see, I ran the social. Looks like we're good. We might as well get started since the garage is open. And feel free to comment. Uh, feel free to comment in the chat. Twisted Mopar Garage. I'm here, me and my fine 2012 precedent. Club car controller debacle. <laughs> hey, so you never oh I remember Twisted Mopar you're having trouble finding one for 2012 it's, it's probably something to do with the Excel system or something I can't remember exactly what it was but yeah that's uh, that's bad One John 1, hey Tim and everyone it's raining cats and dogs in South Texas this morning we kind of got some bad weather uh, not bad it's just kind of a dreary day outside you know, kind of day where you're not really sure what you want to do. I mean, I wish it was sunny and warm. It's kind of it's kind of wet and and miserable out there, you know, right now. So I don't know what I'm going to do today. I would, I'm looking forward to the better weather, though. It's coming. I, I looked at the extended forecast. Rock Dog, hey all, what's up, Rock Dog? Thank you for coming, man. Appreciate y'all being here. Kurt, looking for Missy. Let's see, Craig, ordered some axle bearing a few weeks ago and was sent the wrong size. Been trying to return them and not sure why my pack and slip email will not come. If anyone at Golf Cart Garage is uh, watching, see if y'all can uh, give Craig some advice on that. All right. Question number one. I have a 2001 EasyGo 36 volt. Batteries die quickly. Have charged and load test all batteries. Seem to be fine. I've replaced the solenoid. I'm getting nowhere near any longevity. Could this be a speed controller issue? If you are sure that your batteries are good. I mean, I mean, I would be asking about your load test. You know, that would be my question. What kind of load test did you do? Because at a golf cart shop, they can load test your entire battery pack at once instead of individual batteries. They can do the whole pack, and then they can give you a really good idea of how good your battery pack is. So if you had that type of load test, so that would that would be the only way you could be 100% sure it's not your batteries or not one of your batteries. If you had that type of load test, then I would say yes, it could be a controller issue. You could be going into thermal shutdown on your controller. And that feels just like your battery's going dead. A lot of people mistake their battery's going dead, and that's what's happening. Their controller's actually going dead. The battery's not going dead. The controller's is thurming out on them. Uh, Twisted Mopar. Contacted the company who has upgraded controllers, but none could tell me if I could just replace it with upgraded controller. Would just plug and play without changing motor and components as well. I got you. Did you contact uh, 
uh, twisted Mopar, did, did you con if we don't have it, I mean, I, I think we've already determined that we don't have it or the, or the one for your car is out of stock at Golf Cart Garage. If so, you could contact FSIP if you haven't already. FSIP, it stands for Flight Systems Industrial Products. You could contact FSIP and see if they have something for your car for 2012. They rebuild controllers. That's one of the things that they do there is they, re they, they uh, take cores and they rebuild controllers. Anthony Moore, good afternoon. Good afternoon to you, Anthony. Thank you for stopping by. Feel free to uh, interact. Let's see. Yes, I contacted your company, gave them the information. Guess, if I remember right, it was either it was out of stock or something with Golf Cart Garage, and we were uh, wasn't able to get one. But if we can't help you, then I, I would contact FSIP. Number two. This is from Wendy. I'm trying to reconnect the charger to the batteries. I have the batteries connected. Does the sequence of the five wires matter? The charger was tested and works fine, but when I plug it in, the light does not come on on the charger. Well, if, I'm not sure what you mean by the, the sequence of the wires, but your batteries across your battery pack, they, they connect together, negative to positive, negative to positive, negative to positive. And then you're left with a, an open uh, battery terminal on the positive side, and you're left with an open battery terminal on the negative side on the other end of your battery pack, and those two spots is where your charger connects to, whether we're talking about your charging receptacle or we're talking about an onboard charger. Now, if all that's connected correctly and your charger's still not coming on, then it could be just a matter of that your batteries are too low in voltage to turn your charger on. Your batteries have to have a certain amount of voltage in them for your charger to come on. Uh, Twisted Mopar said they contacted the company who rebuild controllers. Was it, did you contact FSIP? There's, there's, there's multiple companies that rebuild controllers, but that's just, uh, that's one of the main ones is why I was asking. Hey Tim, Keith from Nashville. What's up Keith? Hope all is good. Yeah, it's good Keith. Everything is good here. Uh, I know I keep saying I'm waiting on the good weather. We had a, like we had a week, a couple of weeks ago, we had some warm weather a couple of weeks ago and then it just all left and, and it's been raining and stuff and we got the next couple of days of rain and, and that just messes everything up. I don't mind the rain sometimes, but yeah, I, I guess it's a good sign when the rain comes, that means the, the fronts are meshing and we're getting, you know, the warmer weather is hitting the colder weather. That's what causes the rain. So I guess it's actually a good sign. That means warmer weather's on the way. And I can't wait. It's going to be a good, it's going to be a good summer. Number, number three. When we plug our charger into our golf cart, we have to position it just right, normally pulling up the charger until the needle starts moving, showing that it's charging, and then put a bungee strap on it to hold it in a bind on it or it will not charge. You think the charger port on the cart itself is messed up. Also our batteries keep corroding, causing wires to break into. Any idea what would cause this? Maybe just time for new batteries. Well you, you've got several things going on there, but, but keep in mind uh, there's always a delay you know, there's a slight delay when you plug your cart into your, your, your charger, when you plug your charger into your golf cart and you're looking at your charger and it doesn't come on immediately, don't do anything yet because there's always a slight delay, like a couple of seconds, some, up to four or five seconds on some cars, depending on what car we're talking about. But there's going to be a slight delay while it senses the voltage and clicks the relay inside the charger. So don't automatically be pulling up on your handle and everything. But if, if you plug it in and nothing happens for 10 seconds, nothing comes on for 10 seconds, and then you pull up on the handle like you're saying, and it does come on, then yeah, you definitely got something wrong inside your charging receptacle or your plug on your charger that's going into the charging receptor. You're not making good contact. You're going to need to clean that out and make sure you get good contact. So that's the first problem that you, that you asked about. Now, what was the second problem? Oh, it was corrosion on your cables to the point where they're breaking. Well, that means 
that it's very likely that that means that you might have a little too much water in your batteries. So stop adding water to your batteries and let that level out to to a to a decent spot. You know, because if you'll It'll continue to pour out until it gets to a spot where it rises and falls without coming out. You got to have room in there for that water level or acid level to rise and fall a little bit in order to stop spilling out of the top of your batteries. So that's why I've always said filling batteries up to the top is too much. Don't ever fill them to the top. It's somewhere between the lead plate and the top, about halfway in between the lead plate and the top. When you open it up and you look in the holes, you can see the lead plates. Cover the lead plates with water, but don't fill it all the way to the top. That can cause the that can cause the, the acid to come out of the top of the batteries and what happens when the acid comes out of the top it goes to the first metal it finds which is going to be your battery post connections with your cables on and it's just going to start eating those away and they eventually just eat them completely off of the battery terminal and make the loose connection and then it could get hot and melt the battery post cause all kinds of problems so clean and, and keep your battery cable connections tight and clean that would be the best thing to do there but yeah, you have a couple of issues going on with your car. Okay, number four. This is from Charlie. Hi Tim, the gearhead. What can you tell me about the Evolution brand of golf carts? I can tell you that I personally do not have a lot of experience with them. They were just coming out like as the, at the time when I was kind of getting out, you know, uh, I'm not really out. I mean, I'm very heavily involved now, but I don't do as much work on particular cars as, as I used to. Uh, they're getting more popular in my area. There's dealers springing up. I know of some dealers. Uh, and and if, they're, if that's happening in my area, it's probably happening all over the place. If I was looking at one of those, if I was considering it, uh, one of those, do you, I would just ask the logical question. Uh, are you gonna be able to service this cart no matter what goes wrong with it? That's what I wanna know. I wanna know if you're gonna be able to fix this cart if anything goes wrong with it, whether it's the controller goes out, whether it's uh, uh, one of my switches goes bad or anything, whatever goes bad. That would be my only concern, you know, if I was considering buying one. Let's see, number five. This is from Bob. Can I test my EasyGo cart charger to see if it is working properly or malfunctioning? It's a Delta Q. It flashes red fast when plugged in and then goes to flashing green. I hear the battery's water begin to boil and it charges real fast and shuts off, but I don't get much of a charge. I'm thinking maybe the charger has gone bad. The batteries seem okay to me. They have been working fine. Well, Bob, the, the first thing that I would do, I know everybody doesn't have the luxury of doing this uh, unless you had a golf cart shop at your disposal with a bunch of cars hanging around, is I'd go plug that charger into another cart and see if it does the same thing. If it does the same thing in another cart, then you you figured out your answer right there. You know that the charger is the is the issue because it's what what you're describing is definitely not normal. That's not normal. So it's either the charger or your batteries, one one or the other. So eliminate the charger by going somewhere and plugging it into another car. Just eliminate that right off the bat, and then we'll get back to your issue because I'd love, I'd want to know battery readings and uh, off of each one of your batteries. Jose Morales, hello Tim, first time live. Well, Jose, thank you for coming by, man. I appreciate it. Uh, always check the recorded programs. They are very helpful, sir. Well, thank you for saying that, Jose. I appreciate that, man. And I appreciate you being here. Evan Schroeder. I think I said that right. Hey, Tim, I recently purchased a 99 Easy Go workhorse with four-stroke Robin engine. It's backfiring severely after coasting downhill. Is that a carb issue? In my experience, that is a carb, that is a carb issue. I can tell you what the... I can tell you what... Uh, I don't know if I talked about this or not. Uh, a few times I would get a, a gas car that I would, when I would go downhill, as long as I had my foot off of the pedal and coast downhill, everything would be fine. But as soon as I put my foot back into the pedal, pow, pow, then it would start backfiring. So in other words, when you're going downhill and you got your foot off the pedal, the needle and seat in the carburetor is supposed to be closed. 
So no gas is supposed to be getting to the cylinder. But if it's not closed and you've got your foot off the pedal and you're going downhill, you got to understand if you're going downhill, what's happening? Your fuel pump is still getting pressurized by the crankcase. So in other words, your fuel pump's still pumping fuel to the car going downhill. And if your needle and seat is not closing, then fuel gets past the needle and seat and is pouring into the cylinder. But you've got no spark because you don't have your foot on the gas yet. And as soon as you put your, your foot on the gas, you create spark. And you've got excess fuel in your cylinder. Cow, cow, cow. All, things, all kinds of things can happen. So that's what had happened to me. So I would say, yes, it is a carb issue. Most likely your needle and seat is not seating properly. Missy, what's up? Evan says that's exactly what it's doing. Well, I hope that's, I hope I, uh, I helped you with that, Evan, because uh, that is what I have seen in the past, and it was definitely a needle and seat issue. Let's see. Over on Facebook, we got Brian Harvey. Hey, Tim, what's up, Brian Harvey? Thank you for being here. We got Francisco. We got Francisco on Facebook. <laughs> That's as far as I'll go with that one. Uh, he says, hello, we have a TXT Easy Go 90s era. What could cause the ITS to engage without pushing the, the, the foot pedal down? What could cause the ITS to engage? Okay, so you're telling me that the, I, I'm gonna have to ask a question, Francisco. Are you saying the solenoid clicks, you can actually hear the solenoid click and you haven't touched the accelerator pedal? I'll come back and check on you with that because what engages the ITS is that little bitty micro switch that's inside there. So, and a lot of times I have seen that micro switch not only be faulty, I've seen it break, like the arm is broken off of it or it's stuck in a, or it got bent. You know, uh, some, for some reason it, the uh, plunger bent it and bent it the wrong way caused the switch to be on all the time. So in that case, it would engage the solenoid all the time. So tell me a little bit more about what you mean by uh, cause the ITS to engage. Evan says thanks. Well, thank you, Evan. Thank you for your question. We all try to help each other out here. There's, uh, if, if I don't have experience in something, or as much experience in some areas, there's going to be somebody in the room that probably does. So we all trying to help each other out here. Let's see. Well, I think we were on number six was the regular question. Just purchased a used EasyGo cart two weeks ago. Took it to, took it out for the weekend. Took it to the lake this weekend for the first time. I usually ride every day at my house, no issues. At the lake, I had two other adults riding with me. As we would approach a hill, the cart would just cut off, like you switched the key off. We would push it to the level ground, and it would go. It has done this several times, but only when people are with me. The cart is not overloaded, and I drive very slowly. Taking really good care of it. Can you help me out? Thank you. All right, I know some of you that have been around for a while are going to know what I'm going to say. I've said, I've said this before, this is a misconception about, uh, this is a, the public's misconception about electric golf carts is that if you drive it slowly, you're taking better care of it or you're babying it. That is absolutely not true. No. Nope. The quickest way to heat up a controller is to drive an electric golf cart around slowly. If you drive it around slowly, especially with weight on it, and you got two other people. So everything that this person is describing in this question is making me think that the controller is getting hot and it's going into thermal shutdown because it only does it when he approaches a hill, he's got extra weight with him. I would bet you that if you tried to go faster, it may even help because you're going to have a little bit more wind cooling things down. But the, what I would do is feel for heat at failure, like when you, you got to the hill and you had the people with you and it failed on you. Raise your seat up and put your hand on where the controller's at. And if you feel a lot of heat coming from there, that's exactly what's happening. Missy was late. Kirk's giving her, a, you're excused. You can be, you can be late. It, anybody, I just want y'all to know, you can be late. Just, you just got to be. But you, you can be late, but you just got to be. So as long as you're there, you, that's good enough.
Let's see. On Facebook, Brian Harvey, 2012 electric precedent has no power to key switch. I know sometimes F and R switch wires corrode and breaks, but is there anything else I can check? Thanks. Got no power to the key switch. Uh, well, the key switch is just supposed to close the, that wire. Like, you know, you got wires going to your key switch, and when you turn the key on, it just closes those two wires and connects them together. You also have to engage the M core. You have to engage the micro switch in the M core. So what I would do is I'd, I'd check again. Is your solenoid clicking, first of all? Does your solenoid click when you, when you have the key on, you've got the car in forward, and you touch the accelerator pedal? Does your solenoid click? That would be the first question I would, have to, I would, I would need to go with, Brian. And by the way, on a 2012 precedent, uh, remember, if your car is not a, let's see, when you accelerate the pedal and the micro switch clicks, the car begins to move immediately, very aggressive, like a lurch. Oh, that's the other person. Okay, I'm sorry. Let me back up to Francisco's question. Okay, yeah, that was Francisco's question. Very aggressive like a lurch. All right. In my experience, uh, Francisco, that does sound like an ITS issue. An ITS on an easy go, they, they can develop a little bitty hairline crack across of them. If you'll look at an ITS, once you, you can't even see it when it's in the car, but when you remove it from the car, there's a, you can see sometimes there's a little hairline crack in that resin that they seal it with, and it gets moisture in there, and it can cause just when you barely touch the pedal, and as soon as it engages, it could cause it to jump. So that does sound like an ITS issue to me. Okay, Brian says that nothing happens. Okay, so if you don't have anything happening to, uh, to make your solenoid click, then you got two things that I would be looking at. Would either be your M core, which is, we, we talked about that, or your controller. Your controller is also in the circuit to activate your solenoid on your particular car. The controller is in the circuit to activate the solenoid. Francisco, I appreciate your knowledge and skill. Well, thank you, Francisco. Thank you for being here, man. I hope, I hope that helped you. Uh, but I, I have seen that before, where an ITS will lurch like that, uh, and it's bad. I've got, I used to, anytime I'd get a bad part in my shop, I would put a blue piece of painter's tape on it, like just so I'd know it was bad. I'd, tape, you, you would, I'd have a shelf full of parts, and there would, a lot of them would have blue painter's tape. Well, the blue painter's tape meant that's a bad part, so I didn't mistakenly put it in someone's car. Brian Harvey says, thank you, Tim. No problem, Brian. Thank you, sir. Thank you for being here, and please come back whenever you want to. Let's see. Now, you guys are talking about beating somebody with 50 lashes. <laughs> Let's see, number seven. I'm a new Easy Go golf cart owner. This is from Dave. I inherited this electric cart the other week. It came with an Easy Go charger. The first time I charged it, I did not hear the charger make a click sound. I did not hear the charger make a click sound. About every 20 to 30 seconds like I do now when I try to charge the cart. The cart does have some power so I know the batteries do have some power. Does the click sound I'm hearing indicate any sort of malfunction? Thank you for your time. Yeah, that does indicate something if you're hearing more than one click because you should, you should really only hear one click. Well, unless it's a, uh, what kind of car did you tell me it was? It's an easy, okay. It's a, on a club car with an onboard computer, you might hear two clicks, all right? But because it, it's gonna, it will, Click on and then click off and then click back on because the onboard computer runs some runs some test at the beginning of a charge cycle. But on an easy go, you should just hear one click. I don't know what a, what the deal is with the multiple clicking that you're describing. So you might want to try a different charger and see if that makes a difference. See if you can get it. Uh, see if you can get it to uh, get to a full charge. See if you can get it because, like I said before, on a 48 volt system, toward the end of the charge cycle. You know, right before the charger's getting ready to shut off, if you put a voltmeter on your entire battery pack on a 48 volt system, it could be 60 volts. And if it's not getting to 60 volts, then you're not getting a full charge. 
Twisted mold car, what does the resistor do on the solenoid on a Preston Club car? Mine is burned pretty bad. That's called a pre-charge resistor on the solenoid. The, the, the resistor is the thing that goes across the big post, all right, across the big post. I don't know on your particular car if you're going to have anything that goes across the little post, but if you do, that's a diode across the small post. But across the big post, that's a resistor. It's called a pre-charge resistor, and it is a it's a, pre, a small amount of pre-charged current that's going to the controller to keep the controller active just slightly. Uh, your, it will most, your car will run without it, but it's, it's a safety device. Let's see, number, let me check Facebook again. We got some people over there. Brian Harvey's, thank you, yep, I got you over there, Brian. See, uh, number number eight on the regular scheduled questions. Let's see, Eric. I mean, Evan has said one follow-up question on my backfiring due to carb needle and seat situation. Do you recommend rebuilding carb with kit or purchasing whole new carb assembly? Well, you got a couple of choices there, Evan. You, you, you actually, you could do that. You could rebuild your existing carb. You have to understand, you may be able to fix your existing carb without even a rebuild. You may be able to get it off and get it on the bench, and as soon as you take the bowl off, you might be able to tell what's happening. You might be able to fix the problem right there without even any parts whatsoever. So that's one option that you could try, and that wouldn't cost you any money. That's just gonna cost you a little time. Or you could get a rebuild kit for that particular carburetor. Uh, if, if that's the OEM carburetor, if that's the original equipment manufacturer carburetor that came on that car, and you wanted to get that exact OEM carburetor, that's going to be the most expensive route. You know, that's going to be the most expensive one. Or you could get just an aftermarket carburetor as a replacement. So that's your three choices. That's up to you. Now, you know, a lot of people like to stick with total OEM. You know, they, if, they, if money's no problem, then get, you know, stick with total OEM. But if you're trying, if you're on a budget or you're trying to save a little money, you, yeah, aftermarket carburetors are available. Let's see, this is from Bob, number eight. I've diagnosed that my electric club car is needing a new V-Glide switch. Can you give me advice on how to install the switch? Well, the, the V-Glide is in a position on a club car that's, it's in a crowded position. So it just depends on how, how uh, easy you want to you wanna make it. Like, obviously you're going to have to remove at least one battery. You know, you're going to have to remove one battery and then that lid on the side of the V-Glide will come off and you can see the switch. Now at that point, you could probably get down on the ground or figure out some kind of way or finagle the position of the car to where you could actually replace the V-Glide inside the, the switch that's inside the V-Glide from that position. Now, if you wanted to at that point, you could always remove the V-Glide and go put it on a bench. I mean, it's just up to you to how, how easy you want to make it. But, you know, the easier to make it, you're going to have to just remove more stuff. But you're going to have to at least remove one battery. Evan, you the man. Thank you. You the man, Evan. Thank you for coming by, man. Let's see. Craig says, I changed one of my A-arm bushings and it did not want to come out. I knocked the screws out of my vice mount, beating on that spacer. You know, I know exactly what you're talking about, about knocking the screws out of your vice mount. I've actually done that before. I've even knocked the screws out of my, uh, my vice jaws, you know, just the jaws themselves. You know, they had screws holding the jaws in place. Well, I've had things in there and put so much pressure on the jaws themselves that it broke those screws and I had to remove those too, so. <laughs> I actually felt sorry for my hammer. Yeah, I've got some hammers that are well used, that's for sure. I feel sorry for them too. But, uh, man, I'll tell you what, a good vice is, is uh, irreplaceable. Let's see. Facebook, Pam Brazil. What's up, Pam? How are you? What type of lube do you recommend when for the electric motor and drive spline when installing the motor? I would just use, for that, Pam, I would use, I've done that a bunch of times, and I use whatever is in my grease gun at the time. 
like you know my grease gun that I use to for to grease spindles or I just take some of that just some of that grease and put it inside the motor coupler and maybe a little bit on the on the uh, input shaft not a lot you just all you need is just to keep that surface cover that surface to keep it from rusting if any water happened to be in there and that that's all you got to do it's a in, anything would work it doesn't really matter nothing nothing special just some type of grease that will hold together like a you know a grease that would be in a grease gun Let's see, Tim, did you see Mad Jacks is releasing their own cart with all Reliance motor and controller and battery and storm body, thinking about grabbing another cart, but don't know if we should go Mad Jacks or a 2023 Navita storm cart based off an easy go. I have seen that, yep. And uh, I don't know which way I would go with that. I know more about the 2023 Navita storm based off an easy go. I know more about that one than I do the Mad Jacks. But I'm sure that the information is on our website about that too, or because since we're involved with uh, with Navel and Magex, so I w I'll check into that. I'll check into that. I like how you keep me abreast of things, uh, Missy. Uh, I need to stay on top of these things. So now you give me something to look into, like that, like that new club car. Let's see. I'll need to replace the bolt too, but could not find locally. Oh, and your vice. Let's see, 12 volt charger first. All right, number nine. I tried this season storing my golf cart at my campsite, but it didn't seem to work out like I would have liked to. I put the cart on jacks. I filled the batteries with distilled water. All right, y'all know I don't like it when people say that. And they said they filled the batteries with distilled water. I don't like it. And then put it on a trickle chart. I don't like that either. I don't like trickle chargers. When I went this past weekend, the cart would not start and the batteries were empty. You know, there you go. And when I turned the key on the dash, the panel lights lights up, but no power. I refilled the batteries with water, hoping to hoping to charge back up. What else can I do besides buy four new batteries? Well, you can continue to try to, to do it. That I would not use a trickle charger anymore and then walk away. I mean, trickle charger, if it is actually a trickle charger, that means it never shuts off. So it's constantly going to be putting volts and a certain amount of amps to your battery pack. And that's the recipe for drying out your batteries over a long period of time. Now, for a short period of time, it probably wouldn't hurt a thing, but not, not over months and months of winter. You know, you're not gonna wanna do that. Uh, the only thing you can do is continue to try. Put distilled water back in the batteries. Do not fill them up. Put, just put it there and continue to try and charge the car. And then check, and after you charge it, if your charger shuts off normally, then check your resting voltage like 12 hours later, whatever your resting voltage is, and see if you're making any improvement. And what you're trying to get, you're trying to achieve, is you're trying to get your battery pack resting voltage up to around 50 volts or something. I ain't charging the bit of the 12 volt. Yeah, you got 12 volt. Yeah, if you got four 12s, yeah. So keep trying to, ch you can also charge, since you have four 12s, you can also charge each individual 12 volt battery with a 12 volt deep cycle automotive charger or something. Get a, a, a 12 volt charger, a lot of people have one of those already. And with a deep cycle setting, and you can charge one of those 12 volt batteries at a time, charge them individually. You can do that, try that also. That may be better for you. Craig said the A-arm bolt's very worn. Yeah. Okay. Number 10. This is the last regular question. I will, Missy. I will look into that. Yep. I'm going to write that down. Mad Jacks cart. Yeah. I'll check into that and see what uh, see what they got going on. Uh, is the uh, if I remember right, the Navitas cart is based off of of a aluminum frame, if I remember right. But I'll, I'll check into all that. I'll, 
because I'd be curious about that myself. Uh, this is from John A, number 10. What do I do to convert my club car to 48 volt lithium ion battery? I need to know how to convert it in simple terms. I'm not a geek or refer to me or refer me to a link I can follow to achieve the outcome. I'd be happy to pay someone to do this if I could find them. My local golf cart place doesn't perform this. Well, I can tell you this, if your local golf cart place doesn't perform that yet, then they're, they're, they're behind, they're, get, they're behind the curve because that's a very common thing nowadays is people going to lithium. It, it's not very difficult at all. You're just gonna remove your batteries. And when you remove your batteries and all the cables that were connecting your batteries together, you're going to be left with one cable that goes somewhere in your golf cart. It's going to, and it's the, you're going to be left with a positive cable that goes to your solenoid, and you're going to be left with a negative cable that goes to your, your uh, controller. All right? So that's it. Your new lithium battery, if you get the one battery in your new lithium battery, it's only going to have two connections on it. It's going to have a positive and a negative connection, and that's those two cables. That's where they go. That's how easy it is. Uh, we now sell uh, lithium kits, eco uh, lithium battery. It's a whole kit, it comes with everything, and it's, and it's golf cart specific. It's a golf cart specific kit. So if you have an EasyGo TXT, you get an eco battery kit for an EasyGo TXT. If you have a Club Card DS, you get an eco battery kit for a Club Card DS. Comes with the right shaped battery, comes with all the mounting brackets needed, comes with a dash comes with the charger, comes with a dash uh, lithium gauge, comes with everything you need. Very cool, very cool kit. Uh, that would be what you would probably want to look at if you decided to do that. And it's going to have complete instructions, of course. All right. Let me remember to do the social media links again. So, where are they at? There they are. There you go. The social media links are running right now. Uh, TikTok, Instagram, uh, but obviously you can follow us on Facebook and YouTube. Please like and subscribe if you're new here. If you're new to this, to this episode, uh, please like and subscribe. That will help grow the channel, help us get more experienced golf cart people in the room. That's what I would like to see. Let me check Facebook over here. Okay, we got William Moore over on Facebook. Love your show. Well, thank you, William. I have a 2019 Club Car Tempo 48. Do high speed motor, mag, I'm sure you meant Magnus there, work is claiming to get three or four miles per hour increase. Thanks, Bill. A typo, I meant Magnus. Well, I can tell you, William, this, that's not the first time we've had that question on, on, in, the, in the chat here. Uh, I, seems like I remember having that question. Now, I have heard people say, I have not done it myself, but I know that it is done. It is not only done by uh, golf cart motor rebuilders actually have even, have even, can even do a magnet shaving. They call it shaving the magnet in it, and it helps the motor turn a little more RPM. So I have heard that it does work, and I have heard people say that it didn't tell any difference. So it's not a very expensive mod, so it would be up to you if you wanted to try that. Now, I'll tell you this, the one that I've heard, uh, a couple of the people that I've talked to where they said that it did make a difference, they, they had club cars like yours. Not, it wasn't a tempo, but I mean, that tempo is just based off of a precedent uh, IQ system, so it would be a very similar electrical system. So if you've got uh, a lead or a line on some, see if you can find a review from somebody, because I've seen reviews both ways. If anybody in the chat has any review on high-speed magnets, uh, please let me know. Craig, give Tim a thumbs up. Well, thank you, Craig. Missy, I've, I've seen, this is from Rock Dog, and driven the Majax. It's a nice ride. I believe they have front disc brakes and AC drive. Seem very nice. Yep, that sounds pretty cool. Yes, love that it has all disc brakes, the Icon and Epic car, like Icon and Epic cars. Yep, that would that would work. All right, let me see. Coupon. Bing. <laughs> 
Get 5% off any parts you order at golfcartgarage.com if, if you put this in at checkout. If you put in TIM10, T-I-M-1-0, put that in at checkout and you will receive 5% off any parts you order. This expires on May the 18th, 2023. So remember that code. It expires on May the 18th. That's a, we got a ways on that one before that expires. All right, cool. Let's see. Let's see, William says, great, thanks. I've ordered one and will install it next weekend and let you know, do that, William. We, that's, what, that's what we want here on the episodes here. We, we, want, feed, we want live feedback on things that people have done, like uh, the, one of the popular things nowadays is lithium packs. Uh, we want some live uh, numbers on range and how your lithium pack changed your golf cart's life. We want uh, information, we want GPS speeds, so, so make sure you get a good GPS Make sure you get a good GPS baseline, William, but before you install the magnet and use the same road, you know, when you, after you install the magnet so we can make sure it's accurate because I would like to know. I would like to know if, 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 uh, if that is going to be the case. So, yeah, we'd appreciate that. And come back and let us know, man. Tell Dave we need some more vids from him. Uh, Dave's, Dave is constantly putting out vids, so I'm sure... I'm sure he's got more coming. <laughs> what do you mean, Kurt? I did I don't need you anymore. All right, here we go. This is this week's tip. Just like the person that asked the uh, the question about the uh, if they want to they want to change their their cart to lithium, and they want to know how to do it. Well. It's the, the concept is very simple. What I, what I described was just a very basic concept of what it takes, you know, when you're, when you're changing to a one battery lithium. It's very simple, just the basic concepts. Now, when it starts getting down to doing the job, things get a little more specific. And this week's tip is to let everybody know, I know everybody in the chat right now realizes this, but YouTube is your friend. There's no doubt about it. YouTube has been my friend for 15 years now or something like that. Uh, when it comes to golf cart questions, but now even more than ever, there are videos on YouTube of, of lithium installations. There, we, we, uh, I don't know if we have a lithium install yet at Golf Cart Garage, but I'm sure it's coming. I'm sure it's coming. I don't know if it's going to be me or if it's going to be Dave or, or who it's going to be, but there will be a lithium install video on Golf Cart Garage. It, it has to because otherwise we're not keeping up with everybody at this out there. There's a lot of people that have them out there. so. You could probably find the exact YouTube video of a lithium conversion on your exact cart on YouTube if you looked for it. The only thing is, is I don't live too far from Mad Jacks. Really? They're also in Georgia, huh? That's cool. Let's see. All right. We talked about that. We talked about the V-Glide switch. We talked about YouTube. We talked about that. And we got everybody covered. All right, I want to thank everybody. Hey, Tim, why don't you do it? You talking about the, uh, the lithium conversion? All right, you know how, I tell you what, you know how uh, a while back we were putting swag in the chat and you kept doing it and I can tell you there is swag at the warehouse now all right there's swag at the warehouse so I tell you what why don't you start putting lithium in the chat <laughs> let's see if we can get that done because uh, that's a that would be a that would be because I, I actually happen to have a cart that needs a battery job Uh, there's swag at the warehouse. I, I don't know. We, we I don't know exactly when and how we're going to to uh, to disperse it, or if they're just, or if we're going to do both. We're most likely going to sell it on the website, and I'll have access to some that I can give away to people in the chat. That's what I think is going to happen. We just hadn't worked out the details on how we're going to do that yet. But we already have them. We got hats like this. It's a pretty cool hat right here. They're 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 all very similar to this sandwich bill hat. So yep. We definitely got it. And y'all made that happen, you know, by, by pushing it, by pushing the issue. So feel free to push the lithium issue. See, we'll see what happens with that because I wouldn't mind doing that. 
Anthony says, swag me up. Okay. If entertainment does them all the time, are you talking about uh, lithium conversions? Yeah, lithium battery install, yeah. Yeah, I saw, uh, when I was at his channel, I looked at some of that, and I, I skipped over to some of his videos because I wanted to see a range test that he was doing. And, uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty good information. I like that. I, I, that's why I want more here because I'm, you know, I'll, I want to know about the different companies. There's, there's lots of different companies out there. There's lots of different lithium packs. So I want to know, you know, the difference between some of them. The, like some of them are going to have more amp hours. Some of them are going to go, uh, <laughs> golf cart. If anybody at golf cart garage is watching, they, I can't help it. I didn't, I didn't say anything, you know, but they, they're, they're, they're saying lithium Tim. I don't know why. I don't know why they're doing that. <laughs> Yeah, lithium, lithium, yeah. Yeah, see, I just, no, no pressure on my part. That's just happened naturally. All right, guys. Lipo Gearhead. Lithium for Tim from Catherine O'Brien Freeman on Facebook. Oh, my God, they're, they're just all over me. They're all over me for lithium. I can't help it. Lithium Tim. <laughs> Uh, they're going to kill me now because, you know, the swag cost a certain amount of money. Now, lithium is probably going to be way more expensive than the swag was. <laughs> All right. Today is Thursday, and I will be back. Oh, Dino's at the, uh, he's at the vet today getting some tests run. There's nothing wrong with him. He's just, we're getting some uh, preventative stuff done just because of his age we're making sure everything's cool so he's having some tests run so everybody uh wish dino good results on his test and uh he'll be back on the next episode all right i'll see y'all later the garage is now closed thank everybody for coming everybody uh missy anthony craig ab kurt uh rock dog Craig, Missy, Craig, Greg, Elliot. Oh, how about a Yamaha G29? I, I think you were talking about, we were talking about the battery, the eco-specific battery packs. I don't know why they wouldn't have one for a, a Yamaha G29, because that's the whole purpose of these kits is that they're cart specific. I don't know why there wouldn't be one for a G29. Uh, Evan, thank you for being here, Evan. Twisted Mopar, Ricky Smith, Jose, Keith, Rock Dog, Juan John, everybody was here today. Thank you, everybody, for coming. It makes it a whole lot more interesting, doesn't it? All right, the garage is now closed. I'll see everybody Tuesday.